So uh, let's not talk about talking about uh, gravity. Uh, let me tell you what Einstein told us. He said, uh, gravity is not a force. There's no such thing as a force of gravity. No such thing. Let me call this 
the S squared for the length between those two points. So the rule in flat space is just, if you want the length of the side of the triangle squared, it will be dx squared plus dy squared. Is everyone happy with that? This is a length squared, okay? If I write down the most general thing that could be a length squared, I could write ds squared, I could have a dx squared, this is obviously a length squared, I could have a dy squared, that's obviously a length squared, but I could also have a dx dy, right? And I could have three functions over here. So I could have a function that I'm going to call xx because it's x squared. I'm going to have a function over here that I call yy because it's y squared. And I'm going to have a function over here that I'll call xy because it's dx dy sitting there. So what I've done is, I looked at this formula over here, which was Pythagoras. And I said, let me generalize it. And I'll generalize it so that I still have the x squared and the y squared, but now I've allowed the x dy, and I've also allowed functions sitting in front of these points, so that maybe in this corner of the blackboard I'll use dx squared, and in this corner of the blackboard I'll use 2 dx squared. Okay, so this, this coefficient here could change as you move around the space. This thing, the g here, is called a metric tells you how to measure distances. And what Einstein's theory of general relativity is, it's all about determining the metric of space-time. So Einstein tells you, take two nearby points in space-time, what's the distance between those two points? So he's telling you this metric. How you would add up the squares of these things to get a distance. And um, he will give you some partial differential equations in um, the world that we live in, it's a set of 10 partial differential equations that you have to solve. They're non-linear. They depend on the mass and energy in the space-time. But the thing that you'll get out, the thing that you're solving for, is this curved space-time geometry. Okay, so, what I hope we've understood is the following. We now know there's a difference between geometry and a flat space and a curved space. Secondly, the way that we're going to describe geometry, what do we need to do to do geometry? We need to be able to measure lengths, and we're going to be measuring lengths with this metric, which is going to tell us what is the length of nearby points. That's how far we've got. Now I want to try to convince you that, in fact, you can replace forces by geometry. So how come you can get rid of forces altogether, and you can have geometry? And the idea is the following. Um, I'm just going to go into a lab somewhere, actually I won't, I'm bad at experiments, but let's imagine I go into a lab somewhere, and what I do is I take two particles and I'll shoot them, so my two fists are the two particles, so I shoot the particles off. Let's say I shoot them off and they just keep traveling, okay, along the straight lines that I shot them off on. If I say to you, are they attracting? What would you say? No. To attract, what should happen? They should get closer to each other. Are they repelling? No. Are they interacting? No. So if I shoot the two particles off, and they come towards each other, what would you say? Attraction. Are they interacting? Absolutely. For sure they interact. Okay. Now, let's do the same experiment, but on a slightly bigger scale. There's the Earth, there's the North Pole, here's the South Pole. I'm going to take two people, and I'm going to shoot them off parallel. They're going to be at the equator, and I'm going to say to the two of them, walk north. Does everyone agree that's going parallel? Now if you walk north, the two people meet at the North Pole. Is that because they attracted each other? No. It's because they're walking on the surface of a curved surface. That's why they appear to get closer to each other, right? There's no interaction going on, you're just moving on a curved surface. If you curve space-time in just the right way, it'll look like the Earth attracts that piece of chalk. Of course, we know the Earth didn't attract that piece of chalk.
because there's no such thing as the force of gravity. It's just that the space-time around the Earth is curved. And that's what's going on. How bold do you have to be to suggest that? Imagine you're having coffee with your friends and, uh, you know, you, somebody drops a piece of chalk and someone says, look at the force of gravity, and you say, there's no such thing as the force of gravity. Can you imagine how bold you have to be to suggest that? That's what Einstein suggested, and he managed to work it out. 